Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and today I'm going to be giving you my top 10 rainy day reads. These are 10 books that I feel like are best to read when it's raining. For number one, I have the Poetic Underground series by Erin Hansen. This is Reverie, Voyage, and the Poetic Underground 3. I love Erin's poetry so much. I wish more people have read her books or have just heard of her in general. So if you have not heard of the Poetic Underground series, I highly recommend checking it out. Next, I have The Sweetest Kind of Poison by Katie Wismer. Katie is also a booktuber over here on YouTube, so I wanted to support her by buying her book. This is a book of poetry following an abusive relationship that she was in and how she recovered from that and who she is today because of that relationship. I actually just read this today and I really loved it. So if you have not checked it out, I highly recommend it. Next, I have If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. This is one of my favorite YA sad contemporaries. This book is very emotional and there's all sorts of trigger warnings, but particularly depression and suicide. So definitely stay clear of this book if that is something that you may be triggered by. If not, I highly, highly recommend this book. I love this book so, so much. I wish more people would read it. I've gone on and on and on about this book on my channel ever since I did read it last year and I just, I just love it. If you like emotional, hard-hitting reads, this is the book for you. Next, I have Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. This also has trigger warnings for suicide and depression, so stay clear of this book if that is something you may be triggered by. But I really, really enjoyed this book, and I wasn't expecting to like it that much. This book follows a teenage girl who is in an accident and she has to relive the same day over and over again and she comes to realize that there must be something she's supposed to change. There must be a reason why she keeps coming back to relive the same day. I really like this one. If you haven't tried it, I at least recommend giving it a shot. Some people love it, some people hate it. I am one of the ones that actually really enjoyed this one. Next, I have The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is actually another recent read for me. I read it a couple weeks ago and I absolutely, completely unexpectedly loved this book. This is an adult thriller murder mystery novel and I do not really read that genre. I don't really read adult fiction in general, much less thrillers and murder mysteries, but I really, really loved this book. This is a story about a young journalist who goes on a work trip on like this yacht with a bunch of different people in her career field. And on the first night, she thinks that she witnesses a murder. She thinks that she witnessed a woman being thrown overboard. But then she contacts security. They go from person to person on the ship to see if she recognizes the woman that she thought she saw killed. No one even knows who she's talking about. There's no one missing. So she starts to wonder if she's going crazy or if she actually did witness this murder. This book was so freaking good. The mystery aspect of this book, I felt like it was really, really well done. I really recommend this book if that is something that you'd be into. Next, I have The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And this is one that I actually didn't like that much, but I know a ton of other people really love this book, so I'm still leaving it on this list because I feel like some of you may enjoy this one as well. This is also an adult psychological thriller murder mystery novel. This woman rides the train to work every single morning and she is basically obsessed with this one family, this one couple that she sees on her train ride to work every morning. And then one day this wife goes missing and the main character thinks she may have witnessed what happened to this woman. However, she doesn't really remember because she is an alcoholic and she doesn't remember the majority of what happens in her day-to-day -day life. So this book is about her trying to dig through her memories to figure out what happened to this woman. Next, I have The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is a middle grade YA dystopian novel. If you haven't heard of this, this is pretty much a modern day classic. This story follows a little boy named Jonas who lives in this society where everything for everyone is dictated. Everything is up to the government. Who you marry, how many children you have, what your occupation or your job is. When you die, everything is dictated 
for everyone by the government. Also in this world, color doesn't exist. So basically like the beauty of the world has been erased. There is one person in the society named the Giver who actually collects the memories of each generation and he is the only person that knows that colors exist. He's the only person who knows what music is. He's the only person who knows what life was like before. And then Jonas is actually chosen to be his apprentice and take his place. This is a really wonderful story set in this really cool, deeply thought out world unlike anything of its time. If you haven't read this one, you definitely should check it out, at least for the sake of saying that you've read it. Next, I have Salt to the Sea by Rita Sepetys. This is a YA historical fiction novel following the sinking of the Wilhelm Gustloff during World War II. This is a story about the ship sinking with a massive death toll that no one really talks about. It's not talked about in history classes, at least it's not taught in U.S. history classes. I had never heard of it until I read this book, so it was very enlightening for me, very educational. I really, really love this book. It is a tearjerker, though. It's very sad, very emotional. If you like historical fiction or if you like books just in general centered around World War II, I definitely recommend this one. Next, if you're more of a nonfiction reader, I have The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This is a fictional twist on a nonfiction story. And this is about a famous American serial killer in the late 1800s. This tells the true events of how he lured in his victims, the things that he did to cover up his murders. This book is really fascinating, but I definitely wouldn't recommend it if you only read fiction. This is definitely more of a non-fiction read. It reads kind of like a fiction to make it the story more interesting, but it is also dry because it's basically like a history book focused on a serial killer. And lastly, I have The Language of Thorns by Lee Bart Dugo. This is a short story collection centered in the Grishaverse. This is a collection of folk tales that are centered in the Grishaverse, so the Shadow and Bone trilogy or the Six of Crows duology. These are supposed to be the stories that families pass down over like campfires from generation to generation. The writing in this book is so beautiful and these stories are so unique. I absolutely love them and I don't usually enjoy things like this. Also this book is just stunning and like the pages have illustrations and with each page new illustrations are added on so that they cover across the whole entire border of the pages. It's really cool. All right, that is it for today. Those are my top 10 rainy day reads. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts were on them. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more bookish content by me. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.